LGBTQ, and adopting. I wanted to take a minute and um, update you guys on this journey. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I am looking at foster to adopt as well as private adoption. Um, I'm kind of going the route of whichever one comes first, I will, uh, I believe, is the right way for me. So, but today's video is specifically about what it feels like to adopt while being LGBTQ. Um, you know, I have been sharing my GoFundMe campaign for this adoption on my Facebook and different social media. And the response that I get has been oftentimes very loving and supporting and people have been, you know, in my corner. However, I'm not gonna lie and say it's rosy and dandelions and peaches at all times because it's not. Um, there's a lot of things that you go through as a person when you're going through the adoption process that is very difficult and hard and emotional. I don't know why it is this way, but I, I the more I talk to people that have been through the adoption process or know someone who has, the more um, I hear about the amount of um, anxiety and how difficult it can be for people. So today let's talk about the specific uh, topic of being gay and adopting. adopting. You know, we go through life oftentimes being taught and raised that we are going to get out of high school, go to college, meet the love of our life in college, get married, have children, buy a home, all that stuff. And when you are LGBTQ+, you quickly realize that while that is that intention is being placed upon you, it doesn't feel right for you. Now, me personally, I always wanted to get married. I always wanted to own a home and have kids and live that traditional aspect of life. However, I knew it wasn't going to be with a woman and I knew that it was going to be harder for me to accomplish that. And for more than half my life, it was not even an option for me. You're kind of set up in life because the idea of homosexuality in any form is not discussed and taught and worked with with kids growing up. So oftentimes, many generations have been put in a place of having to figure it all out by ourselves. And what that does to so many people is it, it you end up carrying these false narratives, stories, beliefs about yourself and the community and life with you throughout your life, even though I am well aware of the realities of my own life and the things I can do as a person. It doesn't negate the stories that I've told myself for so many years um, of things that you will or will not be able to do or will or will be difficult, will or will not be difficult or not for you to accomplish. So as I approach this process journey of adopting a child, some of the biggest things that come into my thoughts as I am sharing this GoFundMe campaign on social media and I'm putting it out there for the world to see, as I make these videos and create this content for people to watch my journey along the way, one of the biggest things that hits me every single time is I hope I don't get a comment from someone who says something like, gay people shouldn't be able to, to adopt or says something like, you know, hate speech toward me. I really, it really scares me to think that someone might ever think I would do something inappropriate with a child because it's so, it has, it had been so grained into your head that people think gay men abuse little children, which it's so not true. And so that has become a fear that 
people would think that I would do something like that. It's even hard to say. And the only thing that I can do to combat that in my own mind, like, is to tell myself that that is lies that the world has placed into the world. That are the lies that people have made up about the LGBTQ community so people can think we're horrible people. And what I get to do in life is every time that fear of mine that someone might comment something negative like that on my videos or or might even say in person like, no, you shouldn't adopt, you shouldn't be able to, which I'll say has happened. I have already had someone in my family say, I don't think gay people should be able to adopt kids because they think it's going to be harder for that kid growing up. Guess what? Maybe, maybe there will be challenging times, but guess what I get to do? I get to use my experience of my lack of feeling loved through life and just pour love into a child and teach a child to stick up for the underdog. Maybe that kid is going to come out even better. So it, it can be really difficult to go through this process because you fear, is the world thinking that you shouldn't be able to have a child? And, and I, can't, I can't help but think, like, there are people who can go have sex and get pregnant and they're heterosexual. And oftentimes, the, the only thing they're going to hear is, this is amazing, God has blessed you, you know, what a wonderful gift. And there's never any pushback. And I, and I know sometimes there is from people, but most of the time there's not. And there's situations I've heard of where people who are on drugs and are, are alcoholics and living these lives that are not the best lives, having babies and, and, and their families are like, this is a great thing. And, you know, this is motivation to get your act together and get your life together. You have a child to take care of now. But... When an LGBTQ person wants to adopt a child, someone like myself, who is well into his 30s, who has a career, who has multiple careers, who is striving for things in life, who loves people, who is of service, who goes to church every Sunday, who worships in his church, who, who participates in his church community, who is of service to his friends, wants to adopt a child, and they have to hear, that's great and all, but because you are gay, I don't think you should be able to adopt a child. That's hard. That's really, really difficult. But I am so grateful that I am a person who perseveres. I'm so grateful that I am someone who, you can throw rocks at me all day long and it will hurt. They, those rocks do hurt. But it's like they say, it won't break me. It won't break me. I don't know what it is about me. I've had friends say, Kevin, I don't know how you keep going sometimes with the amount of things that people say about the LGBTQ community. And I just keep pressing forward because I know I'm a great person and would make a great father. And I know I have a lot of love to share. I always have. I've always loved spending time with children. I've worked in preschools. I've worked with kids with special needs on more than one or two occasions. I've worked with kids in the system, kids who at 12, 11, 10 years old have been doing heroin and are now wards of the state. And I've seen those kids, all they wanted was a hug from an adult to tell them they are loved because they never got it from their parents. I've worked around that. I know what that is like and how hard it is to witness. And I wish the world would just stop treating people they don't understand like they are outcast and wrong. Because they're not. They're not wrong. You know, so tomorrow I have a CPR certification class that I'm going to do. It is um, CPR and first aid, so the foster care agency, and I'm fairly certain during a home study for uh, private adoption, they would want the same thing. 
um, requires that I get a water safety test, which I've already done through the Red Cross. They offer that online for free, which was amazing. And then um, I also have to do a CPR first aid class, which I have already been CPR certified, but that was many years ago and I believe those expire. So I am gonna get it done again. I do remember how to do CPR, but since it's been so long, I would definitely regardless want to be recertified for that. So that's tomorrow. I'm excited about that because I want to get out and be around people first off. And two, it's just another step in this journey. So that's where I'm at. I will, t I will say this to close this out. I am happy to be the person that I am today. I love the person that I am today. I love what I get to share with the world and the things that I'm doing to positively impact the LGBTQ community. And with my podcast, LGBTQ Stories, the kids that I affect with that show and the stories that I curate and bring to that show and the lives that the, the emails I get and the things I get from people about how inspired they are from hearing people's stories. I love that I am who I am and I cannot wait to share it with a new life. So if my story motivates you, if it inspires you, please like and subscribe, subscribe, help me there. Please share the GoFundMe. I'll say this last thing. I had someone, um, a friend of mine from high school, I shared, I asked her if she could share my GoFundMe on her Facebook wall, and she did. Well, turns out her mother saw that. Her mother then shared the GoFundMe, and then her mother donated $500 to my campaign. You guys don't realize that there might be people in your life who have a passion for adoption or fostering of any kind. And when they see people are trying to do it themselves, they will help. So sometimes some of the best things we can do is sharing the GoFundMe link on our walls. Um, and obviously donating. If you have $5, donate $5. If you can skip that cup of coffee, skip that cup of coffee and donate the $5. That's it. Thank you guys for listening and uh, just in, 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 in joining me on this journey. I'll keep you guys updated regularly as much as possible. Bye.